folks and welcome back to Fishing with Den. So today I'm back on the tidal river that I fished a few weeks ago where I did the balling in and if you look down just down here you'll see I've got the same sort of idea again. Hopefully you managed to see that okay because I'm doing this on a selfie stick. Um, I'm going to try the same idea this time but uh, a couple of uh, different things I'm going to do. The, the, the tide is actually going out today and it's also almost coming up to slack tide so the the current is much slower i've put a pole out at uh, nine meters again and i've actually put the the pole quite a ways upstream at the moment just as a marking point to aim at uh, that's my pole just uh, sticking out in the water um, there's the telegraph pole from last week this time the the poles off to the right of it so if i um, cast uh, sorry if i throw the, the balls up around about where the uh, at the end of the pole is, it should end up around about where that telegraph pole is. Well, that's the theory. But anyway, the thing I was going to tell you was that this time, as you may remember from before, I did catch a few mullet down about sort of a rod length out that way. And I had an odd one down that way too. But I had those on the, the method feeder. This time, I'm going to set up a float rod uh, with an Avon float, because that's what I've got available to me today. Don't have any stick floats, I'm afraid. Um, and, and basically what I'm going to do is try and feed the swim as if it was sort of like roach or chub fishing in the UK. Now, whether that works, because I'd be fishing for mullet, I don't know. But I'm assuming you can feed a shoal of mullet to, to come in towards you and you can bag up on them. And if I'm wrong, well that's okay, because I'll still be waiting for the, uh, the carp to turn up out there. And uh, it's just something to do while I'm waiting for that to happen. Okay, so here we go then with the 20 balls. Okay, now what we've got to do is wait. Well, I was just setting up the other rod there when it went round, and that's after probably less than 15 minutes here we go Let's see if we can get them in with a the minimum fuss very shallow down there at the moment can't get the net far enough down and of course he woke up come on fish there we go that's got you he certainly woke up in the net didn't he Whew. yeah good fish that is a decent fish oh. look at the belly on that I'm not quite sure why she would be in spawn at this point because it's the end of January however it obviously is but that's a nice fish and I'm going to weigh it I'm shaking <laughs> I'm going to go with 14 pounds 11 so that'd be 13 pounds 8 that's a good fish to start the day not bad at all. We're just about getting to uh, slack tide now and hopefully you can see that it's really uh, shallow down along the edge there. Now just off the end of my rod top is where it goes down but again if you remember the last time we came when the tide came in it was almost level with the top of the bank here so at some point I'll have about two or three feet down there so what I'm going to do while there's a slack tide is just put in a load of bait down there just to see if I can uh, stimulate some activity for when I'm using the float. May or may not work, but hey, it's worth a go, isn't it? So let's uh, grab some of the pellets and probably somewhere about there ish, I would think. I'm only guessing. It's not as though it's a match, I can do whatever I want, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Get a few. It's a sweet corn out there. And I can always try down there, of course, for the 
the carp on the method feeder if the, the float doesn't actually work in the end. But we'll have to wait a couple of hours yet before the tide really starts to come in properly. So in the meantime I'm just going to concentrate on the, the tip. Well I'm an hour in now and just like last time I had that one fish straight away and haven't had a bite since. So I'm just wondering if it's going to go exactly the same way as last time where I caught fish in the last hour and a half or so. Anyway, the tide has stopped now and it is just starting to flow left to right. So once the, the current gets a bit stronger, I'll take that Avon rod and I'll fish just down there a little bit and we'll just see if we can catch either some mullet or some carp. But I'm going to feed it, as I said, just like um, you would at home for um, roach or chub or whatever, just trotting down and just see if that works. Bit of fun. All right, so it's uh, starting to move from left to right now as the uh, tides change. I'm probably fishing, I don't know, six or so feet deep. Um, I've put a little bit of bait in just down there, but there's a very, very steep shelf, and I'm not absolutely sure if this is where I'll end up fishing in terms of distance out, but when my uh, bulk hits the, the bottom, obviously the float pops up, so I'll know where I am. Oh, that just seems like a bit of a, a knock there. Could be very small fish, it could be mullet, I don't know. Well, that's not bad, is it? Little nibble first go. I see now my float's sticking up some more, so the, the bulk shot is on the bottom, and I've probably got 18 inches of line after that. So that's probably a, a rod length out after the end of the tip, so just goes to show how shallow it is at this first part down here. It seems to go from nothing slightly deeper and then just, just literally goes off at the end of a cliff. Kind of out of practice at this sort of thing. In such a long time since I've done it. All right. Well, obviously, I've got the bulk off the bottom now, as I said before, because the floats are trotting at its proper height. I'll let it go down a little bit further, and then I'll see if I can just pull it in a fraction. But you never know, it might just get a bite. There are a few carp um, milling around. Whatever it is, it's not very big. Oh, <laughs> it is a mullet, but... <laughs> oh, it's not a mullet, it's a little bream. Spikes everywhere. And teeth, look. <laughs> a few bits of... Uh, out there. A little bit of corn. The current's not going all that fast yet, but I'll pull this in a little bit. I don't want it to be too far off the edge of the, the slope. Yep. Oh, yes. Another little bream, even smaller. Little slow drags under I'm ignoring. It's the jerky bites I'm trying to to hit. That looks like it's just dragging on the bottom. Well, shades of chub fishing. Oh, slightly bigger maybe. Oh that's gotta be a mullet. <laughs> So strong for their size, and so fast. That's better. We'll net this one. No, we won't. They fight well above their weight, these things. Seem I need to um, particularly feed for these things. There must be hundreds of other things down there. There we go. Just 
just got to strike at the strike at the um, really sharp ones. <laughs> You could put a net of these things together quickly. There we go. Mullet again. Really don't need to feed for these things, just ch chuck the, the float out and it goes under. Well, you get a bite, I won't say it goes under. See what I mean? They kind of bob. As much as you get, you don't get a proper gazonder bite. But then by the time you've missed one, you probably lost your bait anyway. Oh, that's different. Well, that could be a carp. I think that is definitely a carp. <laughs> it just goes to show that if it is that they can compete. Just tighten the clutch down a bit. Oh, it can't be anything but a carp. I haven't seen it yet, of course, but. Oh, yeah. That'll do. Not a bigger carp, it's probably six pounds, I suppose, but it's a carp. Get some bait in. It's not as I've got to feed like you do for chub or anything, just get a bit of bait down there somewhere, and uh, that's it. It's not like you have to do continuous feeding to keep them coming, they're just there, and uh, there must be hordes of the things. That's the bottom. There's obviously something down there, but even without striking, you don't come back with any bait. You've just got to strike at literally everything. And let me keep waiting for it to go under. See what they're saying now about mullet being frustrating fish. Say bream. I don't really like catching these things, they're too spiky, they've got spikes all over everywhere. Oof, even smaller. I think this time I'm gonna let it. Uh, settle and I'm just going to drag it in so the shots are on that uh, ledge down there. Just see if I can entice a, a carp. You never know. All right, I think we're, that's it. We're on the bottom of the shots. <sighs> Missed it. I'm going to give this another couple of casts and then I'm going to Go back out over the um, method feeder baited area and see if there's anything out there. I'll try the same thing again, just pull it in onto the ledge area. There we go. Maybe not quite on the ledge this time, but either way. This place is full of bream at the moment. There we go. Okay, I'm going to go back to the ledger for a while and um, see if I can catch some carp. 
never seen such tentative bites, have you? Still, carp's a carp. And off we go, off to the races, eh? Seems there are some fish down there. They're not as mad keen on feeding as they were last time yet, but then that was right at the end, and that's obviously when they'd found the ground bait, and there was a whole bunch of them competing for it. Yep, I think it was too green yet. You get the line in, and then as soon as you've got it in, they decide to take off again. This is a bit more depth down there for the landing net now. Just let that uh, sit down there for a minute. So we fit these fish. Okay, good one. What's that, three? Yeah, three. But only two from out on the pre-baited line. Good fish though. Yeah, not huge. Eight pounds, ten. So that's uh, seven pounds, seven ounces. Nearly seven and a half pounds. Can't complain of that though, can you? Something happening, but... I really don't know whether to strike, I mean, there's something. Normally with a, a method feeder, especially a big heavy one like this, you just expect it to just go whizzing around. But the bites are literally hardly anything. Yeah, see what I mean? little bite like that. <laughs> oh, got a fly at my nose. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> this one doesn't feel too big. Not that big. That's it, in a minute. Okay, four. <clears throat> That's actually bigger than I thought again. I'm looking at that and uh, Torpedo, it just didn't fight all that well, which is very unusual. However, I'm not complaining. Well, the new prawn rig seems to work with the uh, pellet band bite, so I'll stay with that for a while just to see. It does appear that the fish have arrived out there already. That's not to say they'll keep coming, but that's a total of four fish so far three off the feeder line and one off the um, float just down in front of me and I'm just going to do a little bit more feeding down in front of me just to see if I can get a few more carp to come down there okay I mean I'm not feeding down the inside line scientifically scientifically rather it's uh, just basically weighing some bait over where the the bites were coming mostly, and uh, see if any carp turn up down there. Totally unscientific, eh? <laughs> Remember, right? <wasn't> it? <laughs> At least it was a proper bite this time. Well, it won't be ready yet, I'll keep eating my sandwich. I think this is the smallest one of the day so far, guys.
Got that many fish I'm getting see all the kinks in the line. Uh, that's what happens when you catch a few big fish. It all gets twisted up. You can get it out again, but I'll do that in a second. Well, not bad. Must get back to eating my sandwich though, eh? Yeah. I think we'll have one more cast out on the method feeder line and then I'm going to come back and see if there's a few more mullet and maybe a few bream and hopefully one or two carp on the, uh, the float trotting line. I find that really much more fun today because it's been so long since I've done that sort of thing. It'd be lovely to catch bream and, uh, sorry not bream, uh, to catch chub and uh, roach and stuff like that again. gone back down to fishing on the Yaven float and I'm actually fishing off the bottom and I've hooked into this carp and it hasn't stopped going away from me yet look and it's still going <laughs> and <it's> still going <laughs> and I'm probably only fishing I don't know four feet deep now I'm right up on the top of the shelf I've come shallower I couldn't um, record it all for you guys because unfortunately the, the battery ran out on the, the GoPro and it's one of those GoPro sessions that doesn't have a um, spare battery you have to try and charge it in situ so that's what I'm doing right let's see what we got oh yeah, that's a nice fish he's not done yet though you watch I'll put the net anywhere near him he's gonna say nah <laughs> see what I mean and that's in four feet of water. Who knew? <laughs> Trotting for carp on an Avon <laughs> Well, 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 I must do this more often. Get my hand back in because I know I'm a little bit rusty at it these days. Alright, come on. <laughs> uh, maybe not. <sighs> A bit long for the net. I'll be glad when I get that deeper net. The problem with the fish here is they have a serrated spine on their dorsal fin that catches in the nets and tears them to bits. So you can only use the very fine mesh nets, otherwise they just catch and catch and catch. Literally tears the landing net to shreds. So many patches in this one. But I've got a new one. As I probably said earlier, I ordered two of the Competition 500 Guru nets. And we're going to stitch two of them together. Come on, get in. <laughs> right, this time. Or not. Get your head in the net. That's it. Okay. Oh, dear, oh dear. <laughs> I'll be glad when I get that deeper net. I could obviously get a deeper net with the free flow mesh, but the problem with that is... Look, come on. Back in the net, that's it. But they just tear those to shreds, like I just said, so you can't seem to win either way unless you get one specially made. Right. Oh, that's a good fish. That is a good fish. Let's get that. Look out of him. A float down there somewhere. Well, look at that. And that's what I mean about the spine there. You see how it's penetrating through the net? And you might be able to see some serrations as well, but that actually will stick in there like you wouldn't believe. And I've actually cut my fingers on those before now. Okay. I need two hands for this one. 17 pounds. 17 pounds 15, so that's 16 pounds 12 ounces. Huh. 
not bad. Not bad at all, eh? Look at that. What a beautiful fish. The trouble is, you don't know what's a carp bite and what's a, a small fish bite like these bream. And the problem is, you get a little tiny indication off the bream and they've ripped your bait off the hook. Carp ones, obviously somewhat slower, and they do go under, but they look like they're pulling under when your, your hook's catching on the bottom, so it's a bit hit and miss. I'll get used to it though. This one feels different. Not sure what this is, I think it's probably a mutton. I suspect it was probably a mullet. <laughs> it wasn't huge, but it was a reasonable size. I'm using a size 14 B911 hook at the moment. And I could go bigger. But I don't think I need to. Get a bite pretty much every chuck. Oh, hang on, what's this? That feels carpy. Yep, that's carpy. Well, who needs to ball it in out in the middle there, or out in the deep water anyway? Um, you can catch just as many down the edge sometimes. I have to admit, I've never tried this down the edge fishing with the... Ooh, there it goes, look. Down the edge, well it's not down the edge, it's a rod length out I suppose, but in four feet of water I've not really tried that in this place before, so I've actually caught odd carp at about a metre out on the, the feeder, just chucking it in just to see, but um, yeah, what a great place this is. Frankly, this is a bit more fun because I do the method feeder fishing all the time. Come on, fish. There we go. That's got gotcha. you. Not too big, this one. Maybe about six or seven, I suppose. This place is full of them, isn't it? Right, well I'm going to have a couple more casts down on the edge here. And then I'm going to put some bait in. I'm going to go back out on the method feeder line and see what's doing out there. Certainly at the moment it's pretty much a, a bream every chuck, or a brim as they call them out here. I'm going to put some bait in down there then, and uh, go back out on the method feeder. Hmm, not much doing out there at the moment still. I think we'll come back in and have some more fun on the float. Yeah, that's another little bream. Yep. Never come across a fish quite so spiky as these things. I think it spikes everywhere. It's about as easy as it gets for, for fishing, really. Just drop it down in front of you, release the bail arm, and uh, watch it go.
Oh, flying bream. Oh. Yeah, well, I'm just uh, juddered a bit there. Oh. There we go. A bit bigger, isn't he? Weighs a bit. Probably about half a pound or so. Look at these teeth there. And look at all those really sharp pointy spines and there's more down at the bottom and yeah. Anything it wants to eat those is gonna have a mouthful. No catching on the bottom down there, but some of these could be bites. Like that one. There we go. The bream. You could soon put a weight of these things together, couldn't you? As you can see, I'm not having to feed regularly like you would normally on a river. Just let it go over the baited area and uh, Bob's your uncle, generally. I probably wouldn't even need to put any bait down there, to be honest. There's that much uh, biomass of fish down there. The mullet have done a total disappearing out there. Which is a shame because they get quite big and they aren't as spiky. Well, I think this could be a mullet. No, another bream. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Well, I did actually because that's all that I'm catching down there at the moment. There's so many other things. So I think in a minute I'll give the float best again and uh, see about. Going back out on the feeder. Uh, teeth on. Ow, ouch, ouch. <laughs> Let's just put him back. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Oh, what a great fun, though, eh? They certainly pull back there, don't they? They're such little fish. No idea how many of them I had now, but it's a lot. And it fills the day up, and ouch, and it's really enjoyable. So, anyway, I think we'll go back to the method feeder again, see what's cooking on that line. Okay, so I'll just chuck the, uh, the method feeder back out. Still on the five bits of corn, and uh, immediately there's indications there. Let's have a quick look at my clock. Yeah. Last time, they came on in about 20 minutes from now, which was about 1.30, so it's 10 past now. We'll see how we go with this. Yep, there we go. I don't think this is a carp. <laughs> I've got a horrible feeling that, that is a, yeah, a mullet still. It's obviously fish down there. These things don't half fight. If they went to 20 pounds, you'd have a job stopping them. I know that. Come on, fish. Let's go. That's a carp. Oh yeah, that's a carp. <laughs> well, he's off. Well, okay. You can stop now, fish. <coughs> Ready? No, obviously not. That took a fair bit of line, didn't it? Are you going to come back? No. Yeah. The thing is, 
is he done? Sometimes they, they do this and you think, oh, I've got this one. And then like that, they decide to go off again. It's only going to take a couple of flicks of his tail to put some distance between me and him, because he's a, a good fish. Right. There we go. Well, oh, good one. Of a distended belly again from spawn, and that is 12 pounds. I'll take my glasses off five ounces, so 11 pounds two ounces. Okay, well, I've just had two fish in two casts on the method feeder line where I did the balling in again, and it is. Um, 1.30 again, so it looks like they can do the same as last time and come on at exactly the same time. Well, two fish says it does anyway. I think that's, I think I just said that was what, seven fish I've had out there? Seven or eight, I can't really remember. Oh. <laughs> that was quick, wasn't it? And you just put it in. That's a fish today though, I mean I've had that one which was what, 16 pounds? That was what, 12-ish? Uh, Did I have one at 13? Something like that, but you can't argue with that, can you? He's gone solid down there, oh, there he is, he's off whatever it was. He's right in the edge there, look. And he went solid on something, probably a, a root off this tree behind me. Now he's coming along underneath me. Probably the smallest fish of the day, actually. I almost said I was disappointed then, but you can't be, can you? Something like this, this is just too much fun for disappointment. There we go. We'll call that one eight. I can't remember exactly how many it is. Yeah, nice thick fish, probably four and a half, something like that. Whoa, that was a proper bite. <laughs> you can't believe it. <laughs> I've missed it. A proper bite like that. Who knew? Ah dear, ah dear. Then sometimes you're just rubbish. Whew. I don't know. Get some more bait on. Right, well, there's plenty of fish out there now, so the bait's obviously doing its work, the, the ground bait that is. So, can't complain, I've got close to as many as I had last time already, and I think it's probably, in fact, let me have a look. Yeah, it's not even two o'clock yet. I've had a really good day all round, actually. You couldn't complain that, could you, even if we're just fishing on the float? I might just come down and do that one day, you know. Come down and uh, have a go just down there all day and just see what I can produce. Certainly different watching the float. Instant bite that time. enough fish though. There we go. <laughs> Come on fish, stop going mad. Oh dear, oh dear. That's bigger than I thought. <laughs> Soaked. Thank you for that. Good fish. <laughs> oh well, thank you. Twelve pounds. 
12 pounds nine, so that's 11 pounds six ounces. Whew, I have to clean on my glasses up as well now. So just to see if a change of bait makes a difference to either bite rate or fish size, I've gone back to the um, hair rig with five bits of corn on it and I'll just give that a quick go to see if it makes a difference or not. Hang in there. It's coming towards me, but I don't think he's woken up yet. It's right under the rod top, look. Any minute now, he's going to have to wake up, surely. Right underneath me, look. What on earth do you do there? <laughs> there he goes, look, he's woke up. I thought we were going to get lucky with this one and just. Um, Get him in without him knowing he was hooked, but nah, he's decided against. Just hanging in the current down in this area just in front of me here. Won't come up, won't do much else. Just dug it up. Oh, there you go, woken up. Go. Oh. <laughs> Come on. That's it. Got him. Another good fish. Eleven eleven pounds thirteen, so that's ten pounds ten ounces. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, to be honest, that looked more like a mullet bite than a carp bite, so who knows? Just kind of twiddling around kind of thing. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I think it is a carp. But it's probably not very big if it is. Wow. I think that's probably one of the smallest carp I've ever seen in this river. <laughs> Mind you, as I've said so many times before, looks can be deceiving in this place. Sorry folks, still having battery problems uh, because there's no interchangeable battery with the GoPro that I'm using. Um, <laughs> the battery's died again even though I've been trying to charge it from a power bank. Um, I've had a lot of fish today and I've done a lot of recording so I'm not surprised it's died but it's just a shame because I've only got half an hour to go and the fish are really coming thick and fast now. I've no idea how many I've had. It's a lot. I really have had a brilliant, wonderful day, and you couldn't ask for more, could you? Of course, it had to be right at the time when the bites were coming thick and fast in this last hour and a half again. And are we going to see him? He can't be far off down there now. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, isn't it fantastic, eh? Mm, bit of a swirl on the top there. Ah, oh, there he is. Oof, got some power, haven't they? 
Right, you done fish. nicely in the, the lip so I'll just throw that down there a second let's winter that back put away this one 12 pounds 7 11 pound 4 do you take the net off lovely big fish really thick and chunky look it's five to three, and uh, this is probably getting close towards the end now, but uh, what a great day. Bites are still coming thick and fast. There we go. Got a stick as well. Well, this is gonna have to be the last fish. This is my three o'clock deadline, which has already passed a little bit, but you have to wait till you get your last fish, don't you? I don't think this one's as big as some. But then again, most of the fish in here are fair size. It's right down here. Oh, he's not all that big. <laughs> probably, I'm guessing, probably five pounds. Yeah. go. Oh, that's a nice way to end the day. Well folks, that's it for another day. And what a day it was. I've really had a, a really fantastic day's fishing today. Um, I don't know how many fish I've caught. Um, I think I've probably had about 15 or so on the, the method feeder at about uh, 9 to 11 meters over the balding ground bait. And I've also caught, I think it's four carp, just down at one rod, one rod length out, uh, using an Avon float and just trotting down. On top of that, I've caught lots of mullet and sea bream, and I've really had an enjoyable day. It just doesn't get much better than this, does it? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, click the button. If you want to subscribe, you can do that too. And until the next time, bye for now.